I'm Sonny Leonard, president of Sonny's Racing Engines in Lynchburg, Virginia. Uh, we started our business in 1969, and uh, I'm 71 years old, and I'm still active in the company, and I go, go to a lot of the races. Uh, I would like to take you through the shop and show you kind of what we do from engine assembly to dyno testing to developing the cylinder heads and manifolds. As far as the parts, most all of the parts that we carry is for our engines. Uh, we, our mail order is probably 50% of our business, cylinder heads, <clears throat> manifolds to other engine builders and uh, the rest of it would be complete engine, dyno tested and sent away to different categories of racing. We, I guess we, we have done a lot of engines for different people, different categories, and, and, and one I was going to probably say something about Ronnie Sox. Uh, of course, a, a legend. <clears throat> In 1988, I'd done pro-modified engines for Ronnie Sox, and uh, it, was a, it was a pleasure and proud to know this guy. And then this little old lady down here, she won, a, she won a race at Norwalk, Ohio. She was 82 years old, and she ran a uh, super stock. And uh, it was just a pleasure to be around a, an older lady like that and could still race and won a national event at 82 years old. That's pretty good. <laughs> then, uh, as far as the truck pull, we have won the last four out of five years in uh, truck pull, four-wheel drive. That's, uh, I met a lot, of, a lot of good people in truck pull, and uh, we won the <clears throat> uh, 2014 four-wheel drive national championship again this year. So, and I've met a lot of good people in drag racing. Uh, I've got one of my. <laughs> One of my customers is 70 years old, and uh, about two months ago, he won a race, I think he was three, day, three days before being 70 years old. And uh, I'm, he's my hero. Anybody can win a race at 70 years old, he's got to be my hero. <laughs> and here's a girl right here that I probably everybody knows, Linda Vaughn. She's always been professional. She's part of drag racing history. And I remember years ago, she come up to me, she said, Sonny, um, you look good. I think you done lost weight. I said, Linda, you lying. You know darn well I haven't lost any weight. But she just won't make you feel good. And, and uh, I really take my hat off to that girl. She's, like I said, part of drag racing is Linda Vaughn. My office in here, you can see I don't keep it too clean, but anyway, I got some special trophies that I've done national, I won a national event with some people like Doug Kirk and Ricky Smith, John Montecalvo, uh, Billy Huff, Carlton Phillips, Harold Denton, and then you've got your go forths. Uh, son and daughter. It's, it's a pleasure being with these guys and uh, accomplished a whole lot. And of course, 200 years ago I was racing, but <laughs> you can see in IHRA back in the 70s I used to race uh, modified eliminator. And then in 1981, uh, <clears throat> Decided to go pro stock racing, and I ran about six months. I wrecked my car testing at a local drag strip, New London drag strip, and uh, I couldn't afford to fix the car back, and uh, so I sold the, what was left of the um, car, and I sold the car to a guy in North Carolina, and. Uh, 
I told him it would run a, a, a certain ET, and I drove it, and it ran what I told him it would run. So after that, we start doing pro stock and professional category for drag racing and IHRA and NHRA. Uh, I'll take you out in the shop and show you different procedures that we do and inventory of what we do. These are different offices of shop foreman. Uh, then we have, as you can see probably, like this, we'll have a shop ticket for manifolds, some for cylinder heads, some for the CNC department, some for dyno. And uh, it's very important to have a good shop ticket to keep everything organized and get paid for too. Now these, we, we try to stock uh, blocks for drag racing and uh, this time of year, uh, we, now we got a little time, maybe we can machine these for uh, future engines and to sell to some of my customers, which are engine builders. A lot of them will buy uh, a block from it race ready and some will buy them as they come in from the factory. So. <clears throat> oh, we've we've got uh, probably got six stalls for assembly, and this is a rare, an old cast iron uh, engine, but this is a block for it, <laughs> and it belongs to one of the guys who works here. It's like for uh, nostalgia. Back here is, uh, for a racing shop, a lot of it is pretty conventional for a ra race shop. Uh, sunning, honing, uh, quickway, uh, rottler. <clears throat> this is a pretty conventional uh, block for, for Boeing. And this old boy here, he's pretty good. To, and then he takes pride in what he does, so that means a lot here. Uh, this guy is making special sleeves. It may be, we, we inventory a lot of sleeves because we end up <clears throat> doing a lot of different bore sizes. And so we have to turn the OD of the sleeves to accommodate whatever bore the block is. And <clears throat> this, this is set up to, after it's machine, this has come off a CNC machine, put guide seats in it, and uh, this application is a pro modified, 900 cubic inches. This is a cylinder head we designed about six years ago for five 300 bore spacing. And uh, this has been extremely good cylinder head, and uh, I know Ricky Smith last year one NHRA Pro Modified using this type cylinder head. This is our fabrication and welding. We make our own intake manifold. Uh, this, this guy is just machining the entry of the intake runners just to be sure they're square and parallel. And then this, is, this, in, this manifold is about 30% finished, so we've got a long ways to go. And I'll show you one that's maybe nearly finished, and I can maybe show you one that is finished. And we make our, we make our own intake runners for our manifold, and we CNC the plates in house, and we have an inventory of plates for different manifolds we build, and these are the runners that we make here. Here's another one that's. As you can see, after these doing the machine and work in there, you can see they, they go to another machine and then they'll plunge, cut the radius. And you can see that it's very uniform and uh, this is probably maybe 45% uh, manufactured. So.
Uh, this is a oven. This is used to heat blocks and cylinder heads up. Before we weld on something, or we'll put a block in there and heat it up to 150 degrees, let it uh, grow maybe five thousandths for the bore, and then you put your sleeves in it. The cast iron sleeves, uh, ductile iron, uh, we just put those in at room temperature. Uh, and then I said if things get bad, uh, we can use this for, for a pizza oven, right? Yeah. <laughs> this is our cylinder head development. He's doing some development work on a cylinder head and that's one we didn't want, that, that one we don't talk too much about that one. And this one is uh, another cylinder head hemispherical. These, in, these cylinder heads for 820 cubic inch pro stock for PDRA and maybe IHRA. These flow about 725 CFM at an inch 200 lift. We do, we do a little development work for cylinder heads for uh, a NASCAR cup team. Uh, but most of the time we don't say that who it's for, but we do work on some of the cup cylinder heads, especially on intake runner and combustion chamber design. Most all of these that you see are R&D cylinder heads. So. This is our five inch bore spacing hemispherical cylinder head for a GM application. Uh, this is used a lot in TPA, T, PTA and uh, PPA truck pull associations. Uh, these type cylinder heads won three out of four years with this cylinder head and 650 inches, uh, naturally aspirated, mechanical fuel injection and alcohol. And uh, we got about 15 of these engines out all across the country in truck pull. And also we use the same cylinder head for uh, PDRA and IHRA Pro Stock. And so it's a pretty versatile cylinder head. This is our 5300 bore spacing. Uh, this is one of the updated versions. We call it a stage two. Uh, this is Mike Costellano and Billy Glidden and uh, other guys, engine builders buy these cylinder heads and build engines themselves. We designed this cylinder head about five years ago. And uh, it's been, it was actually based off of our five inch four spacing wedge. And there was a big demand for 900 inches. So uh, we designed that. It takes a lot of money to for the research development and to pay for the foundry tooling. But this is a five axis CNC vertical mill. Uh, five axis works simultaneous. So you, you really need that. And when you heat head porting, it's uh, such an odd configuration. Uh, working simultaneous is a big bonus for that. And uh, we do a lot of cylinder heads and also we make our intake manifold, and so we make our flanges and some of our runners on back, back here in the CNC department. Like you said, this is a natural aspirated engine. Uh, makes approximately 2,000 horsepower. It's, that goes, that's a lot of power, and natural aspirated, because some of the guys don't want to run nitrous oxide, so this is a, a very good combination of if you want to go fast without nitrous. Uh, I have two engine dynamometers, a uh, Superflow. Uh, we have a 901, a 902.
It took it to 8,000. It was 1984 horsepower at 8,000. Uh, peak, well, not peak torque, but the lowest I ran it was 6,500, 1,381 foot pounds of torque, 1,709 horsepower. And uh, in the mid range, uh, 7,400. 1343 foot pound, 1892 horsepower. And then 8,000, 8,000 has still had 1300 foot pound and made uh, 1984. And then the next time, next test will be probably, uh, we'll probably put more timing in it and maybe actually the O2s. Uh, very consistent, and so it's you could pick it to death and try to make five or ten, ten horsepower, but we, there's no reason to do that. This is plenty, plenty of horsepower for what this guy's going to do, so he's going to run uh, probably the top sportsman in PDRA and IHRA, and uh, then some local quick eights. <clears throat> but it's naturally aspirated. Um, some of the guys just don't want to use nitrous oxide and don't want to force induction. Uh, so they want a big, efficient, naturally aspirated engine like this. On the other side, I have another dynamometer. On this side, we have a... This is a 903 cubic inch uh, Pro Modified. It's for... Uh, PDRA and uh, IHRA and, and NHRA and uh, this engine makes around 1750 naturally aspirated and uh, of course depends on how much nitrous you put in but it's safely around 2700 of course some old boys take them up to close to 3000 but if they miss it if, if they miss the tune up of course most likely they're going to put pistons in it but that's just the way it is in that category for a modifier. These are components for different engines we are building. Uh, he'll have a, we'll have a uh, machine shop ticket and then whatever parts they need, the parts guy, he will bring the parts out and put in the uh, different shells that will be identified by who, whose engine you're working on. This is, uh, this is, Manifold for one uh, hemispherical cylinder here. This is a billet. And uh, it's pretty neat craftsmanship right there. And you can use this for carburetor or you can use it for fuel injection. You could just plug existing holes and you can uh, put a different top on it and put a carburetor on it if you like. Of course, this is made for, this is designed for EFI. And we have five stations for assembly. And uh, Rusty, he's putting this engine together. It's a Brodex block and it's for, it's a 727 cubic inches and it's going to be for street engine. Uh, we sold one a guy in Australia, uh, 727, and he put, put a little over 4,000 miles on it, and that was, it, it was uh, something, was, it was made a good results, it was good for us, as far as for selling products. And um, Rusty is end gapping rings before he starts assembling this. I was going to tell you that Rusty, uh, eight of them has been with us over 20 years, so. And he's been here for that 200, right? 27. 27. And I'll just show you this. This is a spec sheet. <clears throat> After he finishes this engine, then he'll fill it this spec sheet. And the spec sheet will go with the engine to the dyno room. And he, he, always, he takes a photocopy. We always keep that in a file. And we keep this one. I'm sorry, the duplicate will go with the engine. Uh, this is uh, a top sportsman engine, 892 cubic inches. When he gets through with it, he'll 
fill this out, specification out, actually 100%. This shows a bore 5083 bore, stroke 5.5 .5 stroke, makes it 892 cubic inches. This engine is, will make about uh, close to 2,000, very close to 2,000 horsepower and naturally aspirated. And uh, this is a billet block, and this block is made. Well, my vendor uh, that does this for CN blocks in Texas, and uh, this is just drag race only because there's no water jackets. As you can see, it's just made for a quarter of a mile. It's made out of billet, aluminum billet, and no water jackets, and it's just, um, he has to be careful. Uh, when he comes back, he has to cool it down pretty good before he runs it again. Uh, most all your alcohol applications run a, a, um, a solid block like this. This, this engine is actually going to run carburetors, but he has to be careful with, he can't let it run too long with no water circulation. The, the circulation is just in the cylinder heads. Here's uh, here's one of the pistons. Show him that. We show him the piston. This engine makes, I said, this engine has about right at 17 to 1 compression. This guy is just putting sleeve into that block right there. He just machined the sleeves to accommodate that size. This is just a, which engine is this for? Truck pull. Truck pull. Uh, 650 cubic inches. Uh, we have, we've got about 17 engines out there. 17, I'm sorry, 17 customers that has this type engine. This engine makes uh, Runs naturally aspirated. Uh, it has uh, around 1,625 horsepower. Peaks around 8,400 RPMs. The guys on the truck pull, truck, they'll pull them around 15 seconds. I was talking to you about manifolds that we fabricate. And this is one finished, ready to go to uh, an engine builder. So uh, every engine builder doesn't have the facilities we do, so I just, I do a lot of manifolds for other engine builders uh, and, and do it at their specifications, or our specifications, some of them, you know, we make it for them and put their name on it, don't matter to us. But this, I just wanted to show you that this is a finished product and the guys do extremely good work. This is for, of course, electronic fuel injection and so the customer, the engine builder, he'll put his own injectors in, make his own uh, linkage, put his own throttle bodies on it. So that's what we do right much too is uh, manifolds and cylinder heads and valve train that we uh, furnish to a lot of engine builders. What I'd like to do is introduce you to all that personnel here and it's well I just make it short and sweet uh, this is Bill and he is in the head porting department and uh, this is Steve he has, he's in the head department also and this is Michael Michael is an engineer and programmer. Uh, this is Kelly. She's the secretary up front. And this is Chuck. He's a machinist and engine a builder. This is Jason, and he's in the head department. And this is Todd. He is in sales and into racing, amp applications of all types of engines. Uh, this is David. He's also in the parts department and 
uh, head of all of the ordering and organization up front. This is Eric. Eric is a machinist and helps testing on the dynamometer. This is Rusty. He's a shop foreman and main head engine assembler. And, uh, <clears throat> Been with me about 27, 28 years. This is Josh. He's in the fabrication and welding department. And this is Herb. Herb is in the machine shop. And uh, also he's versatile in, in different areas. This is Randy. Randy is head of the fabrication and welding. Uh, very good at fabricating and especially new design. And this is Francis Leonard. This, <laughs> this is also uh, head secretary and also my loving wife. Uh, this is for future expansion. Uh, I think this is I believe 20 by 80. So if I decided uh, I wanted to put engines in cars, this would be good. Or if we wanted to put more equipment, it uh, already has the electricity, and I would have to put three, uh, three corners, I mean three sides, and I'd have uh, uh, an addition. I want to thank you guys so much for coming by to visit us. and. Uh, I just wanted to say I'm very fortunate to have very good people that works for me and uh, I'm very blessed and I thank you guys so much for coming by.